Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Monday, December 18th. I'm Alex Osola for The Wall Street Journal. Tech companies are integrating AI into more aspects of our everyday lives. It's in cars, search engines, even in healthcare. But what could AI do to help solve big global problems like climate change? Kate Brandt, Google's chief sustainability officer, recently spoke with WSJ Paris bureau chief Stacy Maitri about how the company plans to use AI in the fight against global warming. This conversation was recorded at WSJ's journal house at the United Nations Climate Change Conference, also known as COP28, on December 2nd. I wanted to ask you whether you think AI has a role um, in addressing climate change. I think AI has a really major role to play in addressing climate change. Um, And we published a report last week with BCG, with Boston Consulting Group, that looked at exactly this topic of what are the opportunities for AI to supercharge climate solutions in this decisive decade. You know, we've been talking a lot here at COP about the global stock take that we are not on track for that 43% reduction in emissions we need to see by 2030. Mm. And what the report found is that Um, AI can enable existing technology and solutions to get to a 10% reduction in global emissions by 2030. And then we further identified that there's three big opportunity spaces, information, optimization, and prediction. And then we have a lot of great examples of not just what's theoretically possible, but actually what's already working today and what we could do more of to really unlock this potential. Oh, that's interesting. Can you give us some practical examples of what AI applications would be? So in the realm of information, you know, AI has the potential to give businesses, policymakers, individuals more information on how to reduce your carbon footprint and how to better understand sustainability data. So um, one of my favorite examples is something we've been doing called eco-friendly routing in Google Maps. So if you're a Google Maps user, you may have noticed that little green leaf that's popped up on some of your routes. That's showing you the most fuel efficient route if it doesn't already have uh, the fastest ETA. And what we're doing in the background is using AI to understand the gradient of roads, the traffic conditions, and other variables to then give someone that choice to take a more fuel efficient route. In optimization, that's really the superpower of machine learning, is optimizing how we use energy, how we use natural resources. And a great example of this is in aviation. So you know we're talking a lot this week about hard to abate sectors. Aviation, about 2% of global emissions. A lot of solutions are coming, like aviation biofuels, batteries, new engine types. But they're going to take a long time to deploy, probably not all, not all coming online this decade. But a third of the emissions in aviation are actually caused by contrails. You might even be able to see one right now, but that's that you know, plume that you see behind jets. So we teamed up with Breakthrough Energy and American Airlines, and we used AI to better understand through satellite imagery when contrails were forming, and then to give recommendations to pilots about how to change their altitude to avoid contrail creation. You know, we're, we're now just starting to interact with AI for the first time. Um, on the consumer level, um, you know, it's becoming clear that these models are fairly voracious consumers of energy. Um, I read a recent report that said that, you know, just to train ChatGBT3 alone, um, it required as much energy as running 123 gas-powered cars for an entire year. So I guess my question to you is, how can we ensure that AI is preventing more emissions than it's producing? Absolutely, and there are several ways that we need to do that. I think the first is to understand where we are today, sort of what's the baseline. The most recent, really highly credible, peer-reviewed study shows us that in 2022, uh, global data centers represented about 0.1 to 0.2% to of global emissions, and about 25% of the work happening in those data centers was machine learning. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're starting from a pretty small baseline. However, you're absolutely right. It's most critical that we are responsibly developing AI as new solutions come online. And I think with AI at an inflection point, it's hard to know what that curve is going to look like. And one of the areas we actually identify in the paper is there isn't good research out there. We need to do that research about what is that trajectory. Um, But in the meantime, several of my colleagues, Dave Patterson and others, published a paper last year that was sharing the best practices that our engineers have been using at Google to dramatically reduce the footprint of training models specifically, which is what you pointed to. So there's 
how you train the models. There's also how you design the data centers themselves, driving towards deep efficiency. That's something we've been focused on since we started building data centers. There's the hardware itself. So we have TPUs. That's the hardware that Google uses um, for machine learning. The TPU V4, which is one of the more recent models, is one of the most efficient chips out there. Yeah. And so it's really that suite of solutions that we need to keep driving towards to develop responsibly. Kate, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. That was Google Chief Sustainability Officer Kate Brandt speaking with WSJ Paris Bureau Chief Stacy Maitri. You can watch the full conversation at journalhouse.com slash COP28. And that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by Julie Chang with supervising producer Catherine Millsop. I'm Alex Osola for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.